a report on EOT and the expansion of EOT, the acronym is going to be on the final exams. So you better write it down. Because <laughs> our guest, Ying Mei Kaplan, is going to help you understand that. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And we're going to go clean today on electric vehicles. Welcome to the show, Ying Wei. Thank you, Jay. Glad to be here. So um, let's let's talk about um, electric vehicles in the state of Hawaii. Um, how are we doing on that? And what's the connection between um, the initiative to increase the number of electric vehicles and your program, your new program that came out um, in your press release called Hawaiian Electric Launches Charge Up Commercial Pilot to Reduce Upfront Costs of Installing EV Chargers. This is all very important. And um, you are the manager of uh, EOT. So exactly what does EOT stand for? Uh, EOT is electrification of transportation. I'm the manager of the deployment and operations division. We also have um, policy and program uh, division um, and then a couple of uh, customer specialists. We are um, uh, uh, a plus high energy team <laughs> in this uh, upcoming uh, you know, industry. And um, the EV adoption has really uh, you know, picked up. Um, and Hawaii is among the five top state, top five states in the US in EV adoption. So we're just trying to prepare ourselves to um, set up for the future, get ahead of the curve. Well, it's a chicken egg thing, isn't it? It's a spiral. The more charging stations I have, the more people are going to, you know, want to buy electric vehicles uh, and not be concerned about range anxiety and so on. Um, so if you make more charging stations, you have more electric vehicles. And if you have more electric vehicles, chicken egg. You need more Definitely. charging stations. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It, it goes both directions. And yeah. it, it's actually how our DC fast charging, which is the public charging program um, started was to um, you know, um, try to build out the backbones to um, help alleviate a range of anxiety. And then we started to have, you know, we also had rates um, to incentivize people to charge during the day when the solar power is at peak. Um, and then we are having the make ready programs. Um, so that's what you were just bringing up the commercial make ready. We also have a, a e bus make ready that was launched earlier this year. This commercial make ready um, is called Charge Up Commercial, um, is a really exciting program. Um, it actually was launched just the day before yesterday, October 25th. So we are accepting. Um, applications from now to mid-January, and then we'll do an assessment of the sites. Um, and then we have some um, prep work to do, um, like conceptual design and you know, um, participation agreement terms and easements. Um, so we have, we have some work to do before reaching the participation agreement. Uh, once that's reached with the site host, we can proceed with the design and construction. Okay, I want to drill down on some of that. Um, so in order to increase the number of charging stations on uh, commercial properties and in, in businesses, in businesses around the state, you have this charge up program, charge up commercial program, which I think is very important. You know, We might have expected years ago, not too many years ago, but years ago um, that um, these businesses would have not only installed their own charger, um, but they would have sold, um, they would have sold charging to their customers and, you know, got paid for it. Um, but that really hasn't happened because I'm guessing here, you can correct me if, if, if I'm wrong, um, that hasn't happened because it's too expensive for them uh, to, you know, to put in the capital to install the charging station, particularly a fast charging station. Okay, so they haven't really done it. So now in comes one electric and says, hey, we got this charge up commercial pilot program, we're going to see if we can expedite, you know, the installation of, of, of charging stations for businesses. And that's what it's all about. And it's three-year pilot, yeah? Yes. Um, our public charging 
pilot has been running for almost 10 years. Um, our uh, Mayfair Day programs are three-year pilots. Mm -hmm. um, so the first nine months is ramp up. We do a design. Um, we um, reach out to, uh, you know, focus groups to try to design so for implementation. And then we have about 18 months to actually implement it. And then uh, uh, 12 months to do the data collection. Uh, so total is uh, three years. Um, and commercial make ready, um, we are going to take up, if not all, majority of the upfront cost to bring the infrastructure like transformers, meters, conduits, electric panels, um, make them and we, we do the procurement, the construction, and make it happen for the site host to just procure their own stations and operate their stations. Um, so yeah, the savings um, are, should be significant enough to incentivize people who probably have interest to install, but you know ha have not the budget or the logistics of hiring consultants and all that all that work to do the prep work, the upfront work. You know, Yingwei, anyway, you talk a lot like an engineer. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I am a civil engineer. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> but you also um, talk like somebody who's familiar with uh, information technology, and you're trained in that too, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I was a IT project manager for HECO for five years before mm -hmm. I took this manager position. And um, yeah, I benefited from both background and connections for sure. And I'm still getting a lot of support from both our IT department and the operations department. Um, yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the perfect combination. So um, let, me, let me drill down on some of that. Um, so uh, I apply. I go to your HawaiianElectric.com website and I apply for this uh, uh, charge up commercial pilot program. Um, and can, can any business apply or are there you know, uh, specifications, parameters uh, that determine which business qualify and maybe which don't? There are um, criteria we set up to prioritize. We have, uh, you know, the funding is uh, capped off um, and we try to achieve as many sites as, um, you know, across a variety of properties uh, to serve our community. We want to be fair. We want to, again, build out the backbones. We're not just there for the profit. We want to build out so uh, we've got a good combination of, say, shops and businesses or office buildings and condominiums or, you know, fleet and parking structures. Um, just so everybody has um, some charging, level two charging stations ready for uh, mm -hmm. their tenants or customers. Um, across the islands or, you know, except for Kauai, of course. So it's um, Oahu, uh, the Big Island and Maui. So that's our goal is to get a variety of participants uh, as well as, um, you know, um, getting the feasible ones, the ones that are at reasonable um, cost so the money would go a long way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that includes location, I suppose. Um, oh, location, location, location. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before. Yeah. Um, okay, so so um, uh, I apply uh, on electric. You, your office determines that I'm on a good I'm a good fit for the program for the pilot. Um, and now, um, I'm, I guess I, I have to identify a location on my property where this would go, and work with you to what did you call it, the logistics, so that you can. You can wire me up with transformers and the like, and uh, and is the right term stub me out, uh, so that you know there's a there's a connection um, for the charger. But I buy the charger, or you buy the charger. Uh, you buy the charger, um, and you operate the charger. Uh, we take care of the infrastructure. We maintain the infrastructure for ten years on the. Mm. Uh, make ready side as well before handing to the site host. So um, everything electricity we take care of, and then uh, on the charger side, the site host 
uh, operates. Um, I just want to mention, since you, um, you said it's expensive, yeah, it, it is expensive and harder, more expensive and harder to do the make ready uh, because it's usually retrofit, you know, like an existing place, existing condominium. Um, it's a, it's relatively easier when you have a new site, especially when we have the ordinances coming in place, you know, allocating um, how many uh, EV charging stalls there should be. So you can really plan it and build it out from the beginning. So that's what we're trying to do is to um, help uh, people who have existing properties to make it uh, possible to install yeah, charging yeah. stations. Yeah. And so, and you're going to stub it out so that I can do fast charging. In other words, the uh, the the, the uh, electrical electric that you provide will support a fast charging station. Is that right? Actually, for commercial make ready, it's level two. Uh, it's not uh, level three. Fast charging is level three. Okay. Uh, that's a different program we have. We actually own and operate the fast chargers. Um, you know, it takes. Um, it's a, a little more complex to uh, maybe a lot more complex <laughs> to maintain the, the fast chargers and it's more expensive too. So that's mm -hmm. another program we've been having for years and we continue to do. Um, but if yeah, I'm a small business. I can, I can apply for the, uh, the, the level two uh, under the charge up commercial pilot, or I can uh, maybe for a little more money, I can get a level three fast charging uh, connection from Hawaiian Electric right now. Um, the fast charging program, yes, they, you can apply on your own, you know, um, we don't, um, we don't have a make ready for fast chargers, but we have a program of fast chargers that is really good because we take care of everything. <laughs> we take care of not just the make ready side, we actually procure and install and maintain uh, the fast chargers. Um, but we are capped off. Uh, that's actually a good segue to our public charging program. Um, so um, we have exist nine, 29 stations existing uh, so far. Uh, I have 26 sites. Some sites have two. Some sites have the potential of ha having an additional charger. Um, but we don't really have room to grow there except uh, for maybe adding a few um, second chargers at existing sites because we're capped up on our pilot on the meter side. Uh, so we did file an expansion program with the Public Utility Commission. We're waiting for the PUC's review. Um, I think they are currently reviewing and um, we're hoping to um, uh, get the approval by next year, sometime next year, yeah. Well, if we're all collectively interested in improving, increasing the number of charging stations, um, you know, in Hawaii, then there's really no reason they wouldn't approve, right? It's just a matter of going through the process, whatever that process is, and getting the approval in hand, right? That's what I'm preparing for, Jay. I'm always preparing for scaling, for expansion, because I, I mean, when we're doing pilots, we can't just think pilots, think existing. If we don't think for the expansion, if we don't have that in mind to say that's gonna be the future, we're not gonna operationalize and sustain. You know, we're setting up IT solutions <laughs> and uh, processes to support the 300. Uh, and I sure hope, uh, you know, I think that PUC um, is reviewing and just they are, they're doing their logistics trying to you know, address, make sure we're doing things right, um, providing all the, you know, requirements and backup evidence for them to uh, evaluate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one thing that strikes me from our discussion so far is that if and to the extent Hawaiian Electric uh, wires up a given property and whatever arrangement, let's assume for this discussion, it's a charge up commercial and you put in transformers and you stub out or otherwise connect to uh, a charging station device, um, that's, that's an expense that, that can't be amortized over three years. You want it to stay a lot longer. You don't want <laughs> you don't want to have to come at the end of three years and say, okay, we're taking it out now. 
Because yeah. you have a, a, a substantial investment, right? Yeah, and we want to invest more. We are an, an electric company. We're an utility company. So we have a you know, key role in, in the decarbonization, uh, the state's goal, the company's goal. We, we're, we're there for the long run. Um, so the pilots, you're right, the pilots are just for the learning. And as we learn from the pilots, um, we would know how to you know, better design our program and also the, to, to set up the more effective ways of deployment and scaling. And yeah, we would, um, toward the end of the pilots, file for expansion. Oh, okay, yeah, I wanna cover that too. So you're learning during the, the, the period of the pilot, the three years, and you're, you know, you're doing information technology and making a big database and, <laughs> and writing a report about what you learned and so forth. Uh, and you're learning not only you know, for the customers, you're learning for yourself. Um, because you know you have to handle the load and all that at certain times of the day because of the you know the midday rates and all. Um, so my question is, what you know, what exactly? I, I know this is you don't have to give me the whole list of things, but what exactly is the primary lesson you're trying to have? What are you learning in the three-year period that will help you go forward and that will help you service customers after the pilot and will help you satisfy the PUC? When you when you apply for an extension, you know after the three years. Yeah, a lot of learning and uh, actually uh, establishing is about the processes, how we streamline the process to make it more efficient, how we integrate internally um, with our operations and uh, technology um, processes and platforms. So we are part of of the operations, we're fully taking advantage of what we have internally to support EOT. Uh, so it takes a village to raise a child. And it's not just our, our company, within the company, we're setting up processes. We're working with um, the uh, authority, uh, you know, um, so that AHJs, you know, like uh, Department of Planning and Permitting here, and, you know, like DPWs or other county agencies. Um, so we'll, we're talking to the city and the state to see how we can help each other out in both the review process and the siting of the new charging stations. We all have the same goal of decarbonization and we all have the um, desire to put our stations out there at the locations that are um, aligned with our, with our business goals, right? Mm. So yeah, the, that conversation is is going on, and you know, will certainly continue. Um, and we're engaging with uh, a lot of uh, community um, uh, EV advocates um, and other, you know, private sectors. So it's a it's a, yeah, a lot of networking. And one of the things in the press release was about how how uh, somebody who participates, uh, you know, in the uh, charge up commercial pilot. Uh, we'll have the benefit of uh, reduced rates. Can you talk about that? How, how, how do the rates vary um, between say an existing, maybe they don't vary, uh, between an existing charging station that's, that's on my business property or, or in my home, whatever, um, and the rates that would uh, be charged under this uh, um, new charge up commercial pilot? Uh, thanks. That's a good question. We uh, our commercial make ready program is coupled with the uh, uh, EVJ and EVT, which are commercial rates. Those commercial rates, again, incentivize um, midday charging. You know, the charging during the day uh, when our solar energy is abundant. Uh, so it it should reduce um, significantly reduce the electricity cost if you take advantage of that. And that's coupled with the commercial, uh, charge up commercial program. Okay. And the meter, a separate meter needs to be installed for that. Um, and um, the meter, uh, we're deploying smart meters, right? So the meters would collect the data and uh, help us learn. So uh, we have a few minutes left and I would like to um, address with you the vision, okay? And when I say the vision, I mean, just a second. Um, 
the vision for Hawaiian Electric, for the state, and for that matter, for the PUC, about the future. You mentioned that uh, ultimately when you put all these programs together, you're looking for what, 300 uh, charging stations around, uh, was it Oahu or your area of operation? Uh, so for that, that's for the public charging uh, expansion that we are waiting for PUC approval. Um, that is across our service territories, again, Oahu, uh, Maui, and the Big Island. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's about 60-20-20 um, uh, in the percentage. So Oahu has a higher demand. Um, and the other islands, we also have um, you know, locations. Um, to ex we, we also have numbers to expand. Um, yeah. So you're talking about expansion. So, um, you know, is there a point, and maybe there's no answer because you have to collect data first, but is there a point where we say, that is enough, that is sufficient. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't need more charging stations right now. We're gonna go on pause. Is there a point in the future where that happens? Um, actually, this number, you know, our team came up with the 300, you know, 75 sites, really, 75 sites, but 150 DC fast charging um, single ports, and then 150 level two, just as a combination to, so they complement each other on, a, on certain sites. So um, um, it's based on a calculation, I think it's going to make up to about 28% of the charging stations needed by 2030. But according to the trend that of EV adoption, that percentage could even be lower. So we're really just making up for a small fraction of the charging stations needed. Um, so we are, you know, hoping that the uh, private sectors would take advantage of our make ready programs and you know uh, just expand on their side so there is a app called plug share uh, where you can go to and see out there in your community uh, what kind of charging stations and where they are on a community level and you can go to ev map uh, that is a specific app to uh, an internal app but it's customer facing right to um, hiko owned uh, public charging stations, fast charging stations. Um, so a lot of people probably don't pay attention to that option on the EV um, uh, map. It's actually on your HECO mobile app. A lot of customers are already using the uh, HECO mobile app to pay their bills or report a power outage. Just scroll down to the bottom or uh, swipe it to the very right side. You'll see it. There is the EV map and we um, update the EV map, lo the locations are there, the ones that are actively um, in use are on the EV map, and the status is also there. The most up-to-date status is on our EV map. And you can also go to the website, you know, uh, Hawaiian Electric uh, slash Go EV, um, and then go to Fast Charging to find that map. Mm, so more data, because this is going to allow you to identify which stations are getting how much traffic, uh, which stations are more popular and so forth. And, and, and that makes you, uh, that allows you to create a new map going forward where you fill in, um, you know, the gaps. Uh, where yeah, you, you we're know. using that. We're, we're trying to set up this uh, analytics on our side. So yeah. we can keep an eye out and, and analyze that. That's for sure. You know, there's a lot of um, work behind the scenes that we're doing. Yeah, sure. It seems, seems only logical. And we talked about a calculation before. I, I can see a, a, a calculation um, um, uh, with the things that you and I have discussed. In other words, so you have more more cars, you have more businesses that uh, you know get into the pilot. Um, you have um, you know information you get from the the map. Uh, and you can you can lay out what you need going forward. You can actually plan uh, around you know your current experience and all the learning experience that you have, both commercial and, and public. Um, and then you can say, hmm, uh, by this year we're going to need that many. By that year we're going to need that many, and so forth. And, and, and before you know it, there are fifty people in your shop all working. <laughs> all we working. are certainly a group that's going to grow. Um, 
you know, the demand is out there and we feel the urge to serve the community. And um, yeah, we're doing our share to try to be out there and, and help you make it happen, help alleviate the range anxiety. And um, oh, I, I wanted to mention uh, that uh, the, because the commercial uh, charge up commercial program it has recently launched, um, if you don't know where to go to to submit your application, uh, the uh, website is Hawaiian Electric slash uh, Charge Up Commercial. That's reasonable. Okay, before we go, I just like you to itemize um, the programs, uh, both pilots and existing programs that are available um, to the public and to the driver of an EV right now today, um, you know, so that we we have a list of them. Uh, what what is that list in terms of the programs by which one electric is trying to uh, incentivize uh, charging stations and thus electric vehicles? Okay, thanks. So there are three levers. We have EV rates. So um, people, even uh, residential uh, customers, can take advantage of the EV rates. Um, and then we have um, the uh, public charging program um, that we own and operate chargers. Um, and then we have the make ready programs and of which we have two. One is charge up e-bus, one is charge up commercial. Um, that we both are in implementation stage and we are taking applications. It's, it's all about infrastructure. It's yeah. all about <laughs> building, building a new state that has a uh, uh, charging station connections and thus uh, uh, electric vehicles. And there will come a time in the not too distant future where that's the only kind of car you can buy. So get ready. <laughs> yeah, the more, the more we, uh, we put out there, the better it is because then we have some kind of redundancy, right? You're not counting on that one charger. You have more chargers and you have better chargers because the industry is evolving the equipment that we found the best years ago may not be the best right now. So we keep, you know, evaluating, assessing technologies to buy the more state of art um, equipment as well. Well, if you didn't, who would? So you've got to, <laughs> we want you to. <laughs> and we want to check back with you, Yingwei. We want to check back with you from time to time and see how the, it's, kind of, it's the, the Think Tech pilot, you know, on the Hawaiian electric pilot. <laughs> we'll check back with you and see how it's going, see how the numbers have changed, see how the programs have changed, and see how, you know, how, how far we have gotten on to our goals. Really appreciate you doing this and coming on the show and telling, telling us about it, Yingwei. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. I would love to share lessons learned with you. I'm also a project manager <laughs> as a background. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's all about transparency, about learning uh, as we go. Thank you, Jingwei. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.